You're watching ABC 7 News at 4, starting with First Alert Weather. Good afternoon and welcome to ABC 7 First News at 4. Now we are looking at some showers and storms scattered about the state of Florida with the heaviest activity again inland. We've had a few brief showers around. I guess the big story is the rip currents still an issue. You can see from the Casey Key webcam showing the high surf crashing ashore there at Casey Key as it has been. And then periodically you'll see a shower go by and that's all it's really been. There hasn't been too many storms that have been moving through. Uh, but once in a while we get a brief shower popping up here and there. The area of low pressure that has been parked over the southeast is slowly moving to the northeast now, causing flooding concerns there. Uh, but for us, a little line of low pressure left behind. You can see the heaviest storm is by far inland, and they're moving at a pretty good clip, so we're not anticipating any kind of heavy rain or any kind of strong storms right now. A little light rain uh, near Clark Road and I-75 pushing off to the northeast that you see right there. Uh, but that is about it. Uh, things are fairly calm, and as far as rainfall totals go, uh, the estimates of rain, not much uh, along the coastline, just a few spotty showers here and there. We have some dry air also into the mid levels of the atmosphere continuing to kind of funnel in, although there is a line of moisture left behind from that trough and we'll see that uh, generate some showers and storms during the early morning hours and again along the coast in the morning. Right now it's 87, the heat index at 100 degrees and those winds are out of the west 11 still. That rip current advisory is in effect. I expect that to expire at 8 tonight and uh, not be issued for us tomorrow. Well, more on that coming up in just a few minutes. Jacqueline Scott. All right, Bob, thank you so much. Now to our top story, a hazmat call at a Sarasota County school. Fire crews rushed to Oak Park School where there was a hazardous fog. ABC 7's Jackie Kelly has been on the scene since that incident started and tells us how this all happened. Jackie? Scott, Jacqueline, I'm here at Oak Park School where they say around 1130 this morning fire crews were called for what they believe to be a structure fire here by the pool. However, once crews arrived, they determined that it was not a fire, but instead a hazardous fog. They called in their special unit and with special encapsulated suits, their crew went into the pool area to, to determine the cause. They found out that it was a Freon um, leak, which Freon does help make air conditioning units cold, and now that was leaking from that AC unit. Now they used a ventilation fan to clear out that area. 14 kids and 9 adults from Sarasota Day Camp were in the school at the time, and they were taken to shelter during the incident. Now there were no injuries from this cause. Now tune in at 6 o'clock tonight, and we'll tell you how this school is preparing to make sure that this doesn't happen during the school year. Back to you guys. Thank you so much. The longtime city clerk in Northport is stepping down after 15 years on the job. Today, we're learning more about Patsy Atkinson's sudden resignation. ABC 7's Rebecca Fernandez is live at Northport City Hall with new information about problems inside the city clerk's office. Rebecca. Scott Jacqueline, although Patsy Atkins has not given an exact reason, her resignation letter cited the demands of the job and that she, quote, needed to slow down. I also spoke to city officials who say they have been looking into the inner workings of the office for the last two years. Memos from the city's human resources department outlined problems with Atkins management style. There were also problems with fulfilling some of the duties of the city clerk's office, specifically fulfilling public records requests. An evaluation of the office found a massive backlog in responding to those requests. The investigation also found that thousands of those requests came from the same person. And tonight at 6, I'll tell you exactly who all those requests are from and how this amount of extra work might have pushed the city clerk over the edge. Live in Northport, Rebecca Fernandez, ABC 7, your Suncoast News. Back to you guys. All right, Rebecca, thank you. New at 4, three 15-year-old girls are facing charges after Manatee County Sheriff deputies say they led them on a chase in a stolen vehicle. Deputies say they found the SUV that was stolen out of Sarasota County in the parking lot of the Ellington Outlet Mall last night. Deputies say three teen girls got into the SUV, and when deputies tried to pull them over, they took off and were eventually arrested at an apartment complex. Operations are back to normal at Tampa International Airport following a security scare last night. Airport officials received reports of a suspicious bag at a screening checkpoint around 9 o'clock last night. The bag was found in Terminal C in the Southwest Frontier Airlines area of the airport. The bomb squad quickly cleared the area, but in the end, no threat was found and no flights were affected.
Investigators are inspecting an Allegiant plane at Orlando Sanford International Airport this afternoon. The plane took off from Punta Gorda this morning and was headed to Milwaukee when it had to make an emergency landing. The plane was diverted to remove bird remains that were found in the engine. No one was hurt. Passengers switched planes to continue their flight to Milwaukee. Jacqueline joins us now for a case in Florida that's getting a lot of national attention. Jacqueline. Scott New at four, a St. Petersburg lawmaker is rallying support to repeal the stand your ground law after that deadly shooting in Clearwater. A major change was made to the law last year, which puts the burden of proof on the defense instead of the person who pulled the trigger. But Representative Ben Diamond still feels the law is flawed. Diamond says the recent confrontation over a parking spot in Clearwater that ended in the death of Marquise McLaughlin is why he is pushing for reform. A battle over voting rights here in Florida is going before a federal appeals court. There is a hearing happening today on a lawsuit that challenges the state's process for restoring voting rights to former prisoners. As many as one and a half million felons cannot vote here in the Sunshine State because of a ban that is included in Florida's Constitution. A judge is questioning the current system that requires a former prisoner to wait up to seven years before they can even ask to have their voting rights restored. The Trump administration's trade war is taking center stage at the White House today. Tensions continue to rise over tariffs, and that trade war is drawing criticism from Republicans in states where farmers are caught in the middle. This comes as President Trump sits down to negotiate with European allies. The penalties on soybeans, dairy, and pork are costing farmers billions of dollars. We are directly the people that's being most affected. It, it is out of our pockets that these millions and millions of dollars will flow. Trump has authorized a $12 billion emergency aid package to bail out the nation's farmers. Those payouts will not begin until September. And Harley Davidson executives say they expect the Trump administration uh, tariffs to increase their annual costs by as much as $100 million. As long as the trade war continues, tariffs imposed on the European Union will bump up the cost of motorcycles sold in Europe by $2,200. But the company says it is absorbing that cost rather than passing it on to customers. Well, let's send it back to Scott for a new food truck trailer serving kids in Bradenton. Scott? That's right, Jacqueline. The new food trailer in Bradenton giving children access to free meals this summer. The trailer is called the Caboose, and it joins two other mobile feeding vehicles until August 3rd. This is part of the Summer Break Spot program. The Caboose will make four stops every day around Bradenton. Meals are free for any children 18 or younger. ABC 7 is partnering with All Face Food Bank and the Food Bank of Manatee County to help families in need on the Sun Coast. If you'd like to learn more about our initiative, you can go to our website, mysuncoast.com forward slash hunger. There's more to come on ABC 7's News at 4. The number of deaths from the worst wildfires in Greece in more than a decade continues to rise. Plus, a life-saving performance by a New Jersey police officer, all caught on camera. A road near a major shopping center so neglected, drivers are now almost crashing into each other. Here is Sarasota's woman, call to action, coming up. Oh. I'll be right back. The day you lose your strength is the day you lose your independence. Muscle is lost with age, affecting your energy, balance, and mobility. Before you know it, you're depending on others just to get through the day. But you can reverse and prevent muscle loss. Introducing MyoHealth, a revolutionary proven approach to increased muscle strength and function in as little as 30 days. Live life on your terms with more energy and confidence. After a serious health issue put me down, Mile Health's getting me back up again. I'm doing activities that I haven't done for a long time. It really works. Mile Health is a safe, natural dietary supplement, the result of decades of research and 24 human clinical studies. You can live stronger at any age with greater strength, mobility, balance, and energy. 
Call or go online now and take the MyoHealth 30 Day Strength Challenge. Planning a Carnival Fantasy Cruise out of Mobile? Then check out the park and cruise packages at the luxurious Battle House and Renaissance Riverview Plaza Hotels. Stay at the Battle House for $169 per night or the Riverview Plaza for just $149 per night and leave your car for the duration of your cruise. Includes transportation to and from the cruise terminal. If you're cruising out of Mobile, come stay with us. Call 1-800-MARRIOTT or visit Marriott.com now. Each day, researchers make discoveries that bring us closer to the moment when all cancer patients can become survivors. Their progress is made possible with the help of clinical trials. Clinical trials are the brightest torch researchers have to light their way towards better treatments. And if you've been diagnosed with cancer, they may be your brightest ray of hope. Speak with your doctor and visit standuptocancer.org slash clinical trials to learn more. Together, we can stand up for all of us. One woman is calling for action tonight, claiming a Sarasota road that she drives several times a week is dangerous and neglected. She says one block of North Ridge Road, just east of Honoré Avenue, is the exit for a major shopping center, and it's long overdue for repainting. ABC 7's Taylor Torgano is live there now with more from the driver who wants it fixed. Taylor? Good evening, Scott. This woman has lived here in Sarasota now for eight years, and she says when she first moved here, this road was in good condition. Now you can see her concern. There's supposed to be yellow lines to separate each lane for the drivers to drive in, but now they're so faded you can barely see them. Here's the problem. It's a stretch of road that gets a lot of traffic. It's the back way to exit a major shopping center on Clark Road, and it's also an exit for a residential neighborhood. In the few minutes we stood there for an interview, at least 30 cars passed through, but I'd say more than half of them crossed over where the yellow lines should have been. Linda Trapato says she's nearly been hit herself numerous times. Now she did reach out to the county thinking that they were the ones responsible for this road, but today they tell me it's a private road. Hear more about the near crashes Trapato has experienced and who's responsible coming up at 6 p.m. I'm live just off of Honoré Avenue, Taylor Torgano, ABC 7, your Suncoast News. All right, thank you so much, Taylor. Now let's go back to uh, Jacqueline, who's in the newsroom with a look at what's trending today. Jacqueline? Scott, a scary situation for a driver in Colorado when a massive sinkhole opened up and swallowed her car. Take a look at this video that was taken yesterday. Police say the female driver was able to climb out of the car before it fell. The car was submerged in water that was about 15 feet down. It all happened during a storm, and police say the rain impacted a pipe below the pavement, which gave way and caused that sinkhole. Also, take a look at this video of sheriff's, de sheriff's deputies in Michigan working together to help a bear that was hit by a truck. It shows deputies escort the bear into the woods. Before that, they had to very carefully maneuver the truck to get the animal out from underneath it. Thankfully, that bear was eventually able to return to its home in the wild. Hey, bud! Hey, move! Hey, bud, move! Stop the train! Stop the train! A life-saving performance by a New Jersey police officer. Pretty scary body cam footage showing the officer alerting a man who was in the path of a fast-moving train. You can see just how close of a call it really was, with the man just barely making it off the tracks before the train zooms by. The man appeared to have no clue that that train was even coming. There's no word on why the man was on the tracks in the first place. Well, let's send it back to Scott for another reason why you need to check your pantries this afternoon. Scott? That's right, Jacqueline. It's an important recall for Taco Bell fans. Taco Bell salsa con queso mild cheese dip is being recalled because of a potential for botulism. The manufacturer, Kraft Heinz, says it's a precautionary measure at this point. The affected 15-ounce jars show signs of separation. 
which can lead to a health hazard. Botulism is a potentially fatal form of food poisoning. If you have the cheese dip, you should throw it away or just take it back to the store where you bought it. Investors will soon find out how durable Facebook is. Four months ago, news broke that Cambridge Analytica got information from nearly 90 million Facebook users without their permission. A tech analyst called the darkest chapter in Facebook's 14-year history. Facebook stocks hit a record day high for its fourth session in a row just hours before its second quarter earnings report. Google is now using artificial intelligence to help you with grammar mistakes in Google Docs. It uses machine translation technology to catch grammatical errors and suggest changes. Right now, the grammar feature is only available for business users. Google has not said when it will be available for other accounts. Let's get over to Chief Meteorologist Bob Harrigan now for our first alert weather forecast. Wish I had that in college. It would have been a lot easier. Lakewood Ranch webcam showing a beautiful day out here. Occasionally a shower or two dancing across the skies, moving from the west to the east, as the case has been over a week now. That's going to change, though, by the weekend. We get back to a southeasterly wind during the morning and early afternoon with the west coast sea breeze developing, which is fairly typical for our summer month pattern. But a nice uh, clear skies out there right now. It is hot, obviously, uh, with all the sunshine and uh, temperatures warming now into the upper 80s to low 90s. Morning coastal showers and storms will still in that pattern. Pattern. It's not breaking away yet, but it will by, I think, uh, Saturday and Sunday. Friday will be a transitional day, but uh, we are going to look for those morning coastal showers around and a few isolated thunderstorms. They haven't been all that rough or intense, but they'll be around. Uh, fewer storms are expected on Friday. The rain chance dropping a little bit as we go through that transition. And then by the weekend, we get back to those big thunderstorms in the afternoon and evening due to the convergence of the sea breeze and that southeast wind and then eventually carrying those storms from inland areas back toward the coast. That'll be the case. And look out, we've been uh, really dodging as far as uh, heavy lightning uh, concentrations go, but that'll be back with us, I think, by Friday and Saturday. And it looks like it might stick around a while as well. You can see the general motion again over the past couple of hours is off to the northeast. Now the heaviest activity by far, central Florida and along the east coast, as that usually is the case when we set up with this kind of pattern. Not much going on, just one or two lone showers dotting the radar in our immediate area. And that'll be about it tonight. Once in a while, we'll see a scattered storm or two, but uh, not a lot of rainfall expected. Uh, just to the east of uh, I-75 off of Clark Road in between there and Bee Ridge, we have some showers. Everything's going to be moving from the southwest to the northeast uh, over the next, uh, it looks like 24 to 36 hours. And then we start to transition a little bit more into a southeasterly pattern. Well, there is some dry air in the upper levels of the atmosphere. This area of low pressure is moving to the northeast now. It is causing all sorts of headaches, though, with onshore flow into the Carolinas all the way up to Virginia. And you can see the uh, little line of low pressure left behind. That will be the catalyst for showers and a few thunderstorms rolling onshore in the morning hours. And then in the afternoon, most of the activity will be inland pushing toward the east coast, as I've been saying over and over again. That has been the case. Uh, we'll look for that activity. Here it is at uh, 630 in the evening. Most of the storms inland and along the east coast on Thursday. Friday, look for this uh, start to move more southeast to northwest here. It's a line of showers moving into Miami there. And then uh, you'll see it kind of heading in our direction. That's the transition. So we'll start to see showers and storms on Friday come up from the southeast to the northwest in the afternoon and evening. Temperatures currently 91 in Tallahassee, the same in Avon Park now. And in Bradenton, it's 89 in Sarasota, 90 in Northport. And the water temperature at 87 degrees. Currently, it's 87. And the winds are to the west. Uh, that uh, rip current advisory is still in effect for area beaches. Temperatures 103 tomorrow for a high in Dallas, 84 in Kansas City. Cooler over the Great Lakes in the Northeast. And I mentioned all that rainfall in the uh, mid-Atlantic coast states up into the Northeast where there are numerous watches and warnings as that low pressure system tracks in that direction. And you can see all those watches all in the areas in green. That's a flood watch. There are some flood warnings around uh, dotted about from North Carolina northward right on into the Northeast. For boaters tomorrow, Winds will be out of the southwest, a bit brisk at 15 knots, and then subside in the afternoon, 5 to 10. Seas will be running 2 feet with a moderate chop out there. The water temperature, I mentioned, at 87 degrees with a few showers in the morning. As far as the extended forecast goes, the rain chance dropping a little bit on Friday. There will be a chance for those morning showers tomorrow. Then we get back to the afternoon and evening thunderstorms that usually cool us off throughout the evening. That sticks around through Wednesday.